I've been associated with Nirman since uh, 2008, even before it started. Uh, I remember a first meeting we had in Pune when uh, Dr. Bang was in Pune, Amrit was there, and he met with a pe- bunch of us who he thought could help think about Nirman, and we were t- sat for two days together and thinking about Nirman. Uh, then I went off and into other places. When I came back, I found that what had been an idea had grown into a much bigger process with lots of energy and enthusiasm about it and so the first time i frankly i came i just came to see what was happening it wasn't really there. but when i came in here i realized that it was a great chance to talk to youth a great chance to take energy from them because i work with a lot of professional development workers around the world and um, well we are professionals and we are a little bit cynical a little bit jaded and that's not the case with the nirman is here so it's always a pleasure to come here talk to youth who are full of optimism who are here because they want to be here not because they have been told to be here so that was a very useful uh, thing for me to do and that keeps me excited and engaged and i keep coming and i am also now slowly started increasing my involvement so i got involved in the uh, selection process last year and this year i am also talking to nirman about the way in which the impact evaluation can be done so slowly stepping up because it is personally i think it is very exciting and the reason also why i come in here is uh, i have gained some experience in the last 30 years working with people and i have learned a lot from other people um including dr abhay bang here uh, i remember writing to him 15 years ago just uh, I remember writing him a letter. That time, I used to actually had to write a letter to send something. I remember writing to him 15 years ago about what I had learned from him and how it had shaped who I was. And uh, in a way, I think I have learned because other people taught me, or were there to help me learn. Maybe I should do the same. Now that I have grown up a particular age, maybe uh, I should do the same with youth. And which is why I, there are two reasons really why I come here. you look at the system outside it is uh, it forces you into do one thing or the other ani but only th- i just want to say two things uh, here that if you choosing to do something different do it because you want to do it uh, nobody is forcing you okay uh, do it because you want to do it and think of it not as a sacrifice the moment you start thinking that oh my god i have sacrificed i could have been running a big hospital or i could have been a big engineer or a vice president somewhere i have sacrificed to contribute for the country you are in you are doing it wrong because that's not the purpose you are not sacrificing something you are contributing because you want to contribute and that's the only way to approach it so since you asked about me okay Uh, most of the people who have my academic background and that was a long time ago have gone into very different career paths for me i'm i don't look at this as a sacrifice because well first of all it is not a competition i'm not competing with anybody else i'm just competing with myself so in a way not even competing there i'm just trying to improve myself every day and uh, secondly well i'm i just it's just an alternative career i mean i could have been uh, in a corporate sector or a consulting agency and being a big consultant partner lots of money i'm in a different role ultimately if the ultimate truth is to be able to be happy with who you are well i am happy with who i am so it shouldn't matter what others are doing it really doesn't matter because my happiness doesn't depend on what others happiness is or what they are doing or what they have so if you are coming in thinking that i'm going to make a big sacrifice don't come don't sacrifice just do what you were uh, otherwise do whatever your uh, skill set is come here because you think you can make a difference come here because you think you will be able to make a difference and you will be happy while doing that don't sacrifice anything but also know this that if you if you go to the market and you like something and you want to buy it you have to pay the price for it whether it is a handkerchief or whether it is a suit or whether it is a motorcycle so if you want to look out for a good profession for yourself a career for yourself you have to pay a price and that's it you are doing it for yourself you're not doing it for anybody else ultimately and if you understand that i think you'll do a better job i think that's that's the only thing i want to tell you uh, before i was engaging with nirman i used to have a hypothesis that uh, the education system in the country is not enabling the youth to make good life choices 
it is putting them in some buckets or streams. Uh, and therefore, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of change, there's a lot of anxiety, stress. Uh, people who end up with degrees that they don't know what to do with or they have never wanted in the first place. That was a hypothesis. And Nirman was providing an avenue to work with these youth who was a bit confused, who didn't know what to do with life, wanted to do something meaningful and didn't know how to go about it. So the idea was that Nirman would be there to help these youth. The more I interact with Nirman, the more I realize that that is true. The hypothesis was true that youth don't know what to do and they do need support. So in a way it is a sort of, uh, it feeds on itself, uh, the hypothesis and what, you're, what Nirman is doing. And uh, I think Nirman is doing a great job of contributing to this aspect. And I see this more and more not necessarily when I interact with the Nirmanis who make it here, but when I interact with the Nirmanis who are applied and when I try to understand the motivation for which they have applied to become Nirmanis in the first place. I, re I see the confusion, I see the anxiety and I see that they are just desperate looking for a direction and the sad part is they don't have anybody in their lives, most of them, who can provide that direction, which is why they are seeking out. Uh, most of them probably most of them, I feel, don't want to really approach their parents for whatever reason to seek that guidance um, and the friend circle is of no use, peers are of no use in this type of thing. They need somebody with experience to do this. So I think, yeah, Nirman is doing a pretty useful job and that is, I think, attested by the fact that year on year, more and more students want to come and students and young people want to be Nirmanis. I think, in a way, that is a good indicator that uh, there is some uh, impact that Nirman has. I have one thing to say and uh, I said it some time back on a, in another forum but uh, what I have to say is that in the last two months, um, the youth who have come out into the streets in India in thousands and lakhs of uh, in numbers to and showed that they are willing to take the trouble, take risks to come out against their teachers, against their parents, against the government, against the police to demand what they think is their right, I think is an enormously encouraging uh, thing. Uh, my generation was caught between two mass protests in India. The protests of 75, 77 when we were too small, too young to do anything about it and the protests today where we are too old to do anything about it. What we have done is most of us have taken a lot of advantage of the economic liberalization of 1991, have become more affluent than our parents who ever were, taken a lot of advantage for ourselves and our families and us, travelled internationally, acquired property, acquired new fancy cars and all sorts of things, all the trappings of uh, prosperity. But we also, most of us, looked at I, me, myself, my family and that's it. We didn't really pay much attention to what is happening in the country. And I think we are at this stage where it is a wake-up call and uh, again, I feel uh, I feel very good that students and youth are taking part in this protest and leading this protest without uh, a political party trying to mobilize them and they're doing it, this is spontaneous type of thing and I feel very proud to follow what the youth are saying. So I don't have any message, I just want to say thank you because uh, mine is a lost generation which wasn't involved in anything like this, neither did we fight for it, we just took. Maybe it's time to follow the youth and give it back. What drives me is injustice. Poverty is injustice. Um, the world is not just. It shouldn't be that way. It should be just. If you have a lot of money, you can do a lot of money. If you have a lot of money, you can do a lot of money. If you have a lot of money, you can do a lot of money. If you have a lot of money, you can do a lot of money. So space may not be. It's not just. It should not happen that way. And upon so that a sentient man, so we are supposed to understand and think and rationalize. And he said, "Yeah, we still behave. If we still behave like animals in which, just like power, is, so dada is. It's not correct. So injustice is not good. And injustice should be fought. And everybody should fight injustice. And I mean, that's what drives me. I always ask myself, am I?" Most of the time, can't. Uh, it's not all the time, but most of the time, I, okay. So I'm doing this. Is it contributing in a small way? I'm not a. I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm a, a world changer. 
but is it contributing in a small way to reduce injustice in the world? That's the only question I ask myself. And if the answer is no, I try not to do it. No. Yes, Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you.